right, I, I am back finally after a very long hiatus. I apologize for that. Um, so now, uh, I've had a lot of things going on, getting my new shop going and all this other stuff I've been working on. And But anyway, I wanted to get back to this, get this finished, and, and um, get prepared to actually start cutting some kits. And I got a couple of other designs that I'm just about ready to start cutting. But um, one thing that I'll to do to finish this wing up is to, we're gonna have to uh, glue this on here. Uh, tr it's gotta be trimmed down just, just a smidge, but that can be sanded down. I can do that later. And the other thing I did, I, I recut the, um, I recut the shear webs so that they fit behind the ribs like this instead of uh, behind the spars I meant instead of between the spars between the spars is stronger but I think on this wing you're going to be fine by making a C versus an I beam and this way that's a little bit easier you can come back and, and set these in there and glue them in there so that's basically all I have to do to finish the right wing and it's done so to start building the left wing we got to do something a little different and, and the way that I build these wings where it's all one piece uh, built as a one solid piece and I have the, uh, the the wing joiners notched into the into the ribs and and it's all epoxied here in the center really makes a strong center section so what when you get it to this point you have to raise this side up to get the proper dihedral so you can build a left wing because you're basically building it as one piece. So a couple things, a couple of ways to approach this. One, we know we're going to have a, a 16th inch sheet down here on the bottom. I believe it's W7 that's going to be down here. And we can, we can set it like this and then we'll add something under the wing, under the wing over here. As long as this is is uh, tied up against your building board and it's it's you know flush it's not sitting on anything you can pin it down here and then add whatever support you need back here right so but for those some people like to measure and make sure they get it dead accurate and the measurement if you if it's like this is two and a half inches from the base of your board or the top of your board to the outside edge of the rib, right? Or outside edge of the sheeting right there. So that should be roughly two and a half inches. You'll get it there, but you still may want to do some fine adjustments because if it's sticking up, if it's coming up off the board, you know it's not right. Because this is cut true, dead, and accurate. So it's if you have that laid out, you're fine. So I'm going to do that with mine. And really, building the left wing is just like building the right wing. It just following the same procedures. Um, but I wanted to get this quick video in, so because I need to get this whole series finished up. Right now, I'm using this box, and since since I can't measure it, since it hangs off the edge of my board, I have to um, use it off my tabletop there. And I'm just trying to find happy spot where it doesn't doesn't rise up or move too much that that's pretty good right there so I gonna pin that through that center rib there into the board so now now as long as I make that where we are snug, not getting any movement. With that, we're basically ready for this uh, left wing. I don't have any epoxy here. I took it to my shop. I got to go get it. But um, anyway, th the steps of building this, we're going to add the W6 here, right? And then we'll have uh, W7. And W13 is going to go on top of that. And we'll have W5 up here. Like so. 
And we'll get all this lined up. And then this is W12, it should be. Yep, so that's going to go up there. And I know I have W8 floating around here somewhere. All right, here are the lower cap strips. We can put those in. And on the kit, I'll actually have numbers for everything. Makes it a little bit easier. I'm just going to set these on here like this. And then W3s go there. That's a W3. This is a W3. I actually don't need to put the ribs on there just yet. W3, and I think, yeah, the last one gets it where the W4 goes. All right, and then we have W3, W3, W3. And then W2, W2 is a little special. It has the two little notches in it because they go, it goes right there, right? And then W3, W4 goes on the very end, and W3 there. And then on the very bottom, we're going to have to put in our, our bottom spar. And if you look, I have a little little bit of a bevel I sanded on there and I'm not gluing this today I just want to show how it assembles I'll glue it up and then it'll be glued up in the next video so that's gonna get epoxied there and I need to find I could have swore I had WA up here Here's W8. So that's going to go there like that. And then when we get epoxy, we will epoxy this spar to these spar joiners. And you want it, you want it flat. You don't want it sticky. See, this has got a little bit of a bend to it. So I would, you know, get some cross pins. If you're using a magnetic board, which I also use, that'll help hold it too, right? Uh, and then you'll come back and you're going to epoxy W2 in here. And W2 is going to help kind of line all this up. Get it down on that, on the spar and then into the slots. trim these back just a little bit let me get w1 in there maybe that'll help me line all this up w1 goes in and then we'll pin this here there we go So, yeah, like I said, I I'm, just imagine that I epoxied that uh, spar to here, and I would use epoxy on this joint, and then I would epoxy this uh, W1 rib to the other W1 rib, and then set it in place. So it's all down tight with, with real good adhesion right there, right? So, and that's going to help line all this subsequent ribs up right so we can come out here and um, glue the uh, W3 ribs just a little snug on there okay we can come back and glue the cap strips later but we just want to make sure that now I'm using this W13 as a straight edge to make sure that all this lines up. 
Um, and you can use, let's see, I have a, I got a square here. And so this, also, you want to make sure that you got a straight line on this trailing edge, you know, and that way you know that this is going to be good out here, right? So you can come in and then glue in all the W3s. And like I said, I'll do all this off camera because I talked about how all that worked. But I wanted to show in this video, this is really all I wanted to accomplish, was the new shear webs. Okay, then we have to finish out the tip with the uh, W18 here. Okay, and this is W18 on the tip. You can't see it. I got my hand way over there. I got to do a little sanding and then that'll glue on the tip. And then like I did before... By creating the bevels on W16, we'll have to create the bevels and do the same thing on the left side as we did on the right side. And but that's it. So that's basically it. And once you get that spar down or all those ribs on there lined up and, and glued in, then you can come back and you can glue in your top spar. And again, epoxy here, you know, you want you don't want to use a super glue here for sure. Because super glues are real brittle and they don't have the same kind of strength that epoxy has. Epoxy has some flexibility to it and it's going to really help your structure right here. The rest of this you could use super glue or I prefer wood glue on most of it. Especially wood glue on the joints from the bass to the balsa. Just because I think I get a better joint. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to do a real quick video on that and say that I'm gonna work. I'm gonna get this finished up, and hopefully this week I'll start finish sanding. I got to do the leading edge. I got some tricks that I'm gonna show for that, because um, this is kind of a classic type leading edge, you know, where you had to do shaping. But uh, in, in my kits, I have a way to make that work out a little better, um, you know, where it's easier to sand. And then hopefully we'll start covering and get this thing ready to go here in just a few weeks. Yeah, here's some of the W8 I was looking for. One more thing about glue. I found these on AliExpress, and I like them for for the Sig Bond or you know the uh, wood glues, regular wood glues like Tight Bond. The, this is a little small, so I thought maybe I could 3D print a new nozzle and put a little bigger tube in it, or you can thin the glue a little bit but at the same time I do like the way it, it leaves nice small beads where I don't get a lot of sloppy glue all over so it's just a little harder to get out you gotta squeeze it a little bit more so I'm kinda not sure but I do like these and I think they're gonna come in handy for like RC56 when you glue canopies and stuff on where it's really gonna lay down a nice small bead where you don't get too much you know but they are handy and the glue doesn't quite adhere to the stainless nozzle there but and they may have these at like some of the craft stores you know michael's or one of the others but anyway um that was just a quick short video i wanted to do and i also want to let you guys know i'm going to start doing some more fusion stuff i've got a one nice big complicated project that i wanted to do and that's going to be me doing it on screen and kind of talking my way through it versus having it all pre-done and know where, what I'm going to do. I kind of want to just work through it on screen and then hopefully y'all can learn some tricks that way too. But anyway, I hope everybody's doing great. Hope y'all are building stuff. Um, if y'all are interested in this kit, let me know. And like I said, I got a couple more that are in the works that are hopefully be coming out soon. Um, yeah, it's been, once I got my shop, I'm able to kind of upscale what I do and hopefully I'll start selling a lot of kits. But anyway, happy flying, happy building and good luck.